Well, I really like the uh, learning about the focus to assessment tool. I didn't even know that that was an option out there. Um, so since I am nearing graduation, I just wanted to take a look at that and um, see what exactly, um, like what jobs and whatnot um, would line up with my skills and where I'm currently at. And I think that that's perfect since I'm near graduation. I have a better um, idea uh, going into the workforce. All right. Anybody else um, really get some takeaways from Focus 2? Did anybody else um, who wanted to be in the Focus 2 session but was unable to, uh, are you going to go back to it later, like show hands or? Um, yeah, I'll be doing that. I had a meeting with my advisor at 11, so I'll be going back and looking later. Great, great. So we recorded that. Now, um, Silas, we learned later, is, is not currently a student but plans to be. So um, that one is, uh, the focus two for us is um, you have to have a UTC ID to be able to get into it. But if you'll reach out to us separately, we'll try to figure out some way to, um, to assist you in that, in that effort. Actually, uh, apologies to correct that statement, but I actually am a student at UTC. Um, oh, so I do have an okay. ID. Okay, but you're all the way over in Seattle right now. Correct, I've been taking classes uh, asynchronous. Oh, great, wonderful. Okay, well then you will be able to access it without issue. Thanks, sir. Yeah. All right. Has anybody in here taken the focus two yet? And if so, what did you think about it? Yeah, I, I, I've taken it. Of course, I'm kind of a nerd, but um, uh, it, it's really helpful, I thought, because not only did it um, unearth a couple of things that I, I didn't realize about myself, it, it also served to confirm um, uh, some things that I, I was hoping to get some information on. So I, I really think that things like the MBTI and the, the, the strong interest inventory, some of these assessments can be um, relied on too much. Um, but, but I really think the focus too is like this really great understanding friend or therapist that uh, will ask you questions that kind of unlock some stuff. So uh, I would strongly recommend the focus too to anybody um, and, and I'll probably take it again the next couple of weeks, just because, uh, again, that's really the goal is for us to continue to grow, grow, change and develop. So as we experience more and more of life, uh, there's a real opportunity for us to, um, to grow as individuals. Maybe our interests will slide, um, uh, slightly. And again, um, this is our, this is the only life we have. I mean, that, that's my belief is that this is the only life we have and it matters. So let's make it count. Thanks, Rob. Um, other points of interest from the day, uh, anything else jump out at anybody? Um, yes, for me, setting and sticking to reliable goals for the future with Mr. Daniel was actually really well because he taught us, or I don't wanna say he taught us, but he told us be like a beaver and take it one day at a time. And it's like what my mom tells me all the time, don't try to eat the whole elephant in one sitting. And I think that's what the thing is like this year, everybody's like, oh, this year is like total crap because of like what we've seen over the past 11 days. But it's like, that's not the rest of the year, you know? Um, and even with that of like going back to school, it's like, oh crap, like you got to get back in the groove of that. And it also is helping me when I'm taking organic chemistry next semester, if like, you know, just take it one piece at a time and set like re um, reasonable goals as well. Yeah, that's that's a super helpful reminder. Like, absolutely. Like, I, I had um, in undergraduate, I had one class that was going to meet um, as a night class, um, and I had just I said, "How am I supposed to do that? I have this night class that meets from like six p.m. to eight thirty p.m. every Wednesday, like for a whole semester." Um, and some close people around me said, "Yeah, it's." Like 14 weeks, you, you can, you can manage that for 14 weeks. Like if you look at it from a, like, that's just a small piece that's approach it one time a week, uh, focus on what you need to get done um, for that one class. And it'll be over in, you know, in a couple of months. Um, and, and I did it and I lived and I got the degree. So, uh, so that's definitely great advice just to kind of break it up into uh, digestible pieces and, uh, and then just approach it that way. That's great advice. Great takeaway. 
Yeah, I, I think something that I mentioned in that presentation is that I think sometimes that we get so focused on writing the most beautiful statement in a smart goal setting, which is important, right? That's what holds us accountable to the goals. But sometimes if we write it and then we don't achieve a small milestone right away, we stop um, because it's discouraging. But if we revoke, we, we kind of refocus the way we think about and start one step at a time, right? Eventually that becomes a habit, a routine. And then let that momentum and let that start kind of be the start to that, that goal that you are setting. Because you kind of understood what you can do, how things are going. You took an assessment of the environment. You, you know the people that are around you. You started that momentum. Um, and then you're, you're, you're more equipped um, to achieving your, your goal. But sometimes I think we, we get stuck on just focusing on the end of this lofty goal. And, and if we don't get started, we just, we just stop. Um, and so I think it's, it's more about what you do before you actually write down your goal on a piece of paper that's most important. All right, who else? Great takeaways for the day. Hi, so um, I recently graduated, my name is Megan, by the way. Uh, I recently graduated um, in December, so very recent graduate. Um, so going into this experience, I was just looking for like really practical, <laughs> I'm in that job applying stage, so really practical takeaways. Um, and I think that every session I went to had some of those. Um, specifically, I really liked speaking with Ms. Donna Cooper um, about resume and cover letters. I think she gave really practical advice of, you know, keep it concise, keep it, you know, specific to the job that you're applying for, um, just skills like that. And then offering to help. I think these are awesome services for alumni be, to use. So very fortunate to have this and that experience. Thanks, Megan. And as a reminder, even after graduation, you do continue to have access to all of our services. So even after you get past that first job and it's a few years later and it's time to apply for the promotion or um, to renegotiate a salary or some, something along those lines, we are still here to help you. So definitely keep coming back. We can help you brush up that resume, practice those interview skills you haven't had to use in a few years. Um, so, uh, so but that's definitely a resource that's still available to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I also wanted to say about the SMART goals presentation. Um, I graduated my master's in clinical mental health counseling. And so it's funny because I'm very familiar with the idea of creating SMART goals for others, but it's really tricky sometimes to take that skill of helping others do it and apply it to yourself and kind of uh, take dose of your own medicine sort of thing. So the reminder is reassuring. Megan, I'm so glad that you said that. I, I you know, I, I've worked in, in a career center for a long time now, and, and I've encouraged folks to go out and apply for other jobs, but sometimes that sounds like I'm trying to push people off of my boat. But, but again, I think it's a great way to really put yourself squarely in the chair of the job seeker where you've got to go out and find something and develop um, your documents and apply and go through the whole process and interview. And sometimes it's a great fit and it's enough to convince you to move on, but, but a lot, hopefully it's not. Um, but again, I think having that, that experience of sharing with others and coaching others and advising others, I think it's great, but sometimes you're, you're exactly right. We're a little bit slower to take our own medicine and, and to follow through on the things that we're encouraging others. So, Again, I think just for um, just to be authentic, um, you know, be the best us we can be, uh, and it starts with me. Uh, and so I think that that's a uh, that's a good mantra and a good reminder for each of us, not just to preach, but also to practice what we preach. It's good. How do we access the videos of the sessions that we weren't able to to be in? So that's me. That's me. 
Yeah. Um, so I'll be uh, cleaning up the uh, the the raw footage, uh, and uh, and we'll be uploading it to the to the mind the gap portion of the of the web page. Um, hopefully, it'll be up next week. Just depends on how much cleaning has to be done. Okay, is someone ready for like the most non-scientific survey ever? All right, so I'm not hearing and say, no, don't do it. So, so if this has been valuable to you, if you've, if you've gotten some, something practical, an encouragement, um, a, a step to go forward with, would you commit, and I'm not asking you to raise your hand or, or find a holy book to put it on, but would you commit to maybe sharing this opportunity with, with people that are like you or dislike you or whatever, but just would you share this opportunity with other people um, personally? Would you call them? Would you text them? Would you email them? Would you put this on social media to say, hey, Mind the Gap is a new thing. I sat through it. I participated. I engaged. I found value in it, and I would encourage you to check it out. Um, if you'll do that and nod, that'd be great. If you'll not do that, and not nod, that's fine too. Um, but again, uh, we would we would really appreciate it because again, um, we think that there is so much on your plate. Not only is it um, time wise, schedule wise, but I think emotionally and and just just figuring out life, there's so much on each one of your plates. And we know that with the semester starting a week or a little bit more later, that this would be a good time to do this but it might not be a good time for everyone. Um, so again, they might not be um, aware of it. So if you can help us increase the awareness, we would, we would be in your debt. And again, we'd really appreciate it. I'm sure your friends would as well. So I heard, saw a lot of nodding heads and a little bit in the chat. So thank you so much for that. But um, again, we're, we're, we've been delighted to serve you and to get, get a chance to spend some time this morning. Um, I just wanted to, to thank each of you for co-creating Mind the Gap with us. This has been a dream. This has been a dry race board. This has been um, at least 300 emails. It's been a lot of a thing, but until you actually open it up and you've got some great other great individuals, great students on the other side, it's just an idea. So thank you for breaking this real. Um, and we're delighted to serve you in any way possible. So Mark, do you have anything else that you'd like to recap? You know, I did. I had one uh, thing that came just from that very last session with Bank Carlson um, because uh, we had a question about um, um, the network. Faith, was that you or was that somebody else that had the question about um, about who you know versus what you know? Uh, yeah, that was me um, because what I was saying was I think that it varies based off of like what field you're going into because well, it could like also work in the field that I'm going into, specifically medical school. It's not like all of who you know, it's majority of what you know and like what you present to them and be like, yes, yes, no, no. And then they'll say like a lot of no's and they'll be like, yes. And then it'll be like maybes, so yeah. Yeah, so I think what, what we came down to was that, you know, um, during the daily preview, I, I talked a lot about how, um, job search is very much about who you know, uh, like having a professional network that you can rely on, finding your next job um, often comes from the idea of uh, your professional network, someone letting you know about a job because they know you'd be a good fit for it. But what, what we really find is that the, that pairs with, um, that you have to be able to demonstrate that you are a viable candidate for that job. You have to be knowledgeable in your field. You have to be someone that's known as being reliable, trustworthy, um, knowledgeable, um, and, and you demonstrate that to your professional network, and that's what makes the professional network work for you. So it's very, it's not a, a an or, it's an and. It's what you know and who you know, um, and so that was a, a great takeaway even for me as a reminder from that last session. I, um, I just, it kind of reminded me of like I had a experience where I was super intimidated about a networking event that was set up for um, our internship experience and I'm a very not social 
butterfly type of person. Um, and I had someone, one of the panelists kind of said, you know, we're all just people looking to find similar people or, you know, friends and community. And it's a lot less intimidating if you can go into those situations knowing that they're also just people trying to also be professional and also present themselves, you know, in a professional but genuine way. And so I think seeing it in that way, knowing that they're sometimes nervous to be on the stage talking to you or to be in the seat in that position, kind of seeing it from both sides has helped me be a little less intimidated um, in networking situations. I, I really think that that's like the, the one of the, the most interesting like parlor tricks ever is that a lot of younger folks think the adults have it all figured out. We don't. I mean, we're literally making it up like three minutes before we have to do it. I mean, yes, there's something to say for expertise and experience and knowledge or whatever else. But I, I think in just peeling the veneer back that no one's got it perfected. Right. And we, we make mistakes a ton. Um, Silas asked this amazing question about developing personal resilience, especially in a career context. So I, I think we're all figuring out how to bandage up our stuff um, and connecting with people that are going to allow us to be genuine and authentic, right? In community and relationship. But, but yeah, I mean, th this whole notion of I've got to project perfection and in order for anyone to like me, friends, that, that, that's, that's a deceptive thought. And, and you, you've got to claim it as such and just, just discard it because Again, we're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make five mistakes today without even realizing it. And I'll probably make 15 more pretty easily. I mean, mistakes happen to everybody, but, but I think that it, I think it's super important to, to surround yourself with the kind of people that you want to be around. And so, Megan, I really appreciate that, that frame to say networking is not like, and I mentioned this in one of my sessions, like holding my nose, I'm going to go network. It's not about like this transactional, like, I'm going to give this to you and you're going to give this back to me. And that's going to, you know, that's going to be the terms of engagement, but it, but it is trying to find people that you have something in common with, or you want to have something in common with, and you're willing to get vulnerable and get real and, and just try to connect. And it's not just like five minutes and you, and you end with a handshake and a breath mint. This is like 2019. This is, this is like continuous activity and being um, being constant with this practice. This, this becomes not a lifestyle, but this just becomes like an aspect of who you are is that you're trying to connect with people, trying to learn, grow and develop. So uh, again, it's pretty easy to use words, but it's harder to do. Um, I'm applauding each of you for doing this because, because again, th this is optional. Um, but I hope that you, you'll agree with me, this is important. So thank you again. So we're, this session goes until 1230. We don't have to use the, the full amount of time. Um, I definitely want to, uh, to invite you if you have any thoughts and maybe you're introverting and, and you don't really wanna say anything to, to stretch yourself. Uh, to, to speak up if, if you really found something valuable today. Uh, there might be something that you heard that someone else didn't get to uh, that, that would be valuable for you to share. So if something really stuck out to you, um, I would share it today. Or you know what, even con conversely, if something you heard really kind of like stepped on your toe and you want to voice that, uh, that might be a valuable conversation to have as well. Uh, so we still have a few minutes if you, if you want to um, express anything, uh, this is an open forum and a good time to do it. So I'll add just in the moment, um, and then I will be quiet and sit in it, that if you are trained in uh, mental health counseling, or if you've uh, been able to uh, participate in it, you know that there is value and complete discomfort in sitting in silence and letting people process. Um, and so there's this tendency to want to fill the quiet, but sometimes you just have to be quiet for a minute and let people think and then some other response comes. So that's what we're going to do for the next moment. Think about what uh, 
you know, if there was anything else you wanted to share today and, uh, and I'll give you some space to think how that and possibly speak. I actually had a quick question um, that was relatively minor and might have already been addressed. I just didn't um, hear the broadcast. Are all of these being recorded and then uh, will they be posted somewhere for review at some point? Yeah, that's right. Um, so we've, we've done our best to, to capture all of them. There's been a lot of in and out in the same rooms and so I'm hoping we haven't had any glitches, but yes, the goal is to um, to record um, each of these sessions and then post them individually rather than one long stream. Um, and they will be um, added to the uh, to the Mind the Gap webpage uh, where the current schedule is, is posted that that'll be replaced with uh, links for the for the session. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I had a quick comment. Um, I, I found Rob's talk about networking really helpful. Um, and I was just, it reminded me of uh, just this TED talk that I watched one time. It's called, um, let me see if I can find it. I just looked it up. But it's by Celeste Headley, I think, Headley. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it's called 10 Ways to Have a Better Conversation. And a lot of the stuff that he had mentioned in, in our talk, I felt like reminded me of that. I feel like it was really um, just a lot of stuff about truly listening and being authentic in conversation. Um, she makes a lot of good points to add on to that. So if anyone was interested, there you go. Uh, Braden, if you've got it pulled up, would you mind dropping a link in the chat box? Uh, so that way we can access it pretty quick. Cool, thanks. Thanks, Braden. Uh, so Braden's currently a part of the IO program, is that correct? Yeah, and he was a part of our Mortarboard Honor Society last year, which is a group that I am the uh, faculty staff advisor for. So we appreciated his efforts last year and glad to see him continuing on as a mock uh, as a graduate student. Thank you. Okay, so that's enough sitting in silence for me. So it might be for you too. Um, so if, uh, if you have, Braden has posted that YouTube link. So if you want to grab that out of the chat, that would be great. Um, if you want to save the chat, you can do that by right clicking on it and, and uh, clicking the three dots there, um, to, uh, to save it. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's see the, uh, <clears throat> just make sure you're, you're reading the, uh, the, uh, comments there. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us. We'll send out a reminder uh, just to kind of uh, let you know, give you a little pre preview of what to expect for tomorrow. And like Rob said, please let your friends know. Um, if you've pre registered, you'll get a little bit of extra content. But if not, all of those links will be out there and available to you, even if you don't register in advance. So that shouldn't be a deterrent to uh, new people joining you tomorrow. Uh, last call for any questions or comments. I have saved my uh, version of the chat so that I can go back and refer to it. Um, but I want to thank you so much for being here today um, and uh, being a part of what we've been doing. Um, your host tomorrow is going to be uh, Danny Grezik. Uh, so be on the lookout for some great content uh, from him during the preview. And uh, any last uh, thoughts from our staff before we head out today? All right. Okay, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, go eat some food, uh, drink some more coffee or something, <laughs> take a nap, let your brain rest and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you guys.